A blessed day, a blessed Sunday to everyone, especially our fellow worshipers who are joining us through this live streaming. One uh, said that uh, the clearest way to show what the rule of law means to us in everyday life is to recall what has happened when there is no rule of law at all. Written by uh, Dwight Eisenhower. No. That we can see the importance of law when we compare it to situations that there are no rule of law at all. Take just for example the traffic rules. No? If anything goes when no one obeys the traffic rules, derecho lang kahit, walang hinto kahit, red na. Patakbong walang limit, hihinto kahit saan, there is chaos anarchy and even violence loss of life or even economic loss because of unruly behavior in that simple fact of life of traffic no? sabi nga nila there is a study that uh, because of traffic here in the in manila we lost millions hundred millions a day because of that no probably because also of uh, yung, uh, our disrespect for laws the first reading today from the book of Deuteronomy where we find a a beautiful appreciation of the law its importance and uh, as it says there for the law becomes the expression of uh, the wisdom and intelligence of God's people and for the people and nations to see and hear and the law becomes now the proof and the expression of God's special bond special relationship with his chosen people as they would say as it expresses their nations will say with envy no this great nation is truly wise and intelligent people and moses continues for what great nation is there that has god so close to it as lord our God. It is to us wherever, whenever we call upon Him. Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are just as this whole law which I am setting you before you today. In other words, the law which Moses presented to God's people is important, significant, because it comes from God and it helps them live intelligently and wisely their life as a people. And it is an expression of their correct relationship with God who made a covenant with them. So we see here the importance of the law because at times we have the impression as if that Jesus did away the law in the Old Testament. Far from it. The basic understanding of justice is the fulfillment of what is lawful, what is law. What is the law? What dictates the law? 
And we will see later on that Jesus is observant of the law. So, the uh, this is seconded, for example, this idea is seconded by the responsorial psalm today, which says, the one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. It becomes a kind of a condition for one to be admitted to his presence, the capacity to live according to the law of the Lord. No. As I've said, one becomes acceptable to God by observing and living according to the law, which is the minimum of justice. Even that, the rule of law, the minimum of justice, the minimum of love, no, is missing in our relationship at times or even in our in society now the gospel on the other hand proposes another way of looking at law that is a vision of law that moves beyond the literal and the externals of the law Jesus points out, points this out in the context of that strict literalist uh, interpretation of the law by the Pharisees. Now, the problem with this perspective is that, yes, we may fulfill all the dictates of the law, literally, scrupulously, but in spite of that, our interiority may be altogether contrary to what we profess exterior, externally. So the Lord is inviting us today to consider more our interiority, our kalooban, where the authentic encounter with God and with one another happens. For it is in our hearts, in our interiority, in our kalooban, where we can truly meet the Lord. And on the other hand, as the Gospel would say, because also here comes the evil thoughts and all kinds of evil. I know that we have all our own share of hypocrisy and it in authenticity. It would be untrue to say I am not hypocrite because in one way or the other or at some moment of our lives we must have been hypocrite and inauthentic. That's why the challenge of the Lord is that we come and enter into these dynamics of growing towards authenticity. And one of the exercises to grow towards authenticity is to deepen our knowledge of ourselves. They say that people who are who easily judge others are people who do not know themselves. People who are so unmerciful in their estimations of people are usually people who do not know themselves. That's why that great challenge, know thyself, is indeed an important lesson 
a lesson for the whole life of every person because in knowing well ourselves that we come face to face with our re the reality of our own hypocrisies and inauthenticities it would be a humbling experience for us to come face to face with ourselves and confess to God our own need for healing in this aspect. A beautiful exercise, practice, is what spirituality calls the particular examine. It is confronting ourselves every day or to make a review of our life's conduct our conduct of the day where we have failed where we have sinned and in the silence of our hearts in the silence where we cannot pretend anymore because God knows us very well and here in the moment of silence of our hearts where we become aware of our own failures of our own frailties and we open our hearts to God's mercy this is one way of growing into authenticity as we face the Lord today now in this holy mass with his word with the sacrament he comes to us inviting us to open our hearts and let his spirit enlighten us and interrogate us that we may know better ourselves and knowing ourselves we may grow in authenticity daily and I think this is one of the best ways in which we become also more understanding and compassionate towards others unlike the Pharisees in the gospel today who were so easy in judging condemning others may our knowledge of ourselves and our experience of God's mercy enable us also to be compassionate towards others Amen